Okay, I'm going to talk about playing a bunker shot. Now the first thing to remember about a bunker is a hazard, so we're not allowed to ground our club. We're not allowed to walk in and place the club on the ground. That will incur a two-shot penalty. So we must make sure that we hover the club above the level of the sand before we play our shot. Um, the club we use is a sand wedge. Uh, the reason why it's best used for this purpose is that the bottom of the golf club has an angle to it, which is called the bounce. And it's the bounce that helps us lift the ball out of the bunker. Um, when we hit the sand, we hit the sand with the back edge of the golf club and not the front edge. The front edge tends to dig down into the sand, the back edge tends to bounce us back out. So we're only looking to hit a small amount of sand just behind the ball. The club will go into the sand, under the ball, and then we'll lift the ball out on a cushion of sand. So we need to make sure that we don't drive the club head down into the ground too much, but just simply swing and just remove the top couple of centimetres of the sand. So before I play my shot, I get myself into position. I've got my feet shoulder width. I've got the ball positioned opposite the left heel. I tend to turn my left shoe further round to point towards to the target. That way I can get my left knee over that foot and establish a nice solid platform. All I'm going to be swinging is the arms and the body just turning back and through as we swing. I'm not going to get my legs involved too much. Uh, that could create a situation where we might hit the ball clean rather than hit the sand behind. So feet shoulder width, wiggle your feet in, it gives you a nice secure footing. It makes us lower into the sand, making it more likely to hit the sand rather than the ball itself. The club face being open, which means rotating it slightly round clockwise, allows us to use that bounce more easily. It does mean there's more loft on the club face as well, which means we're going to get the ball out of the bunker, over the nice high lip and landing softly on the green. So, nice and secure with the legs, putting the left knee a little bit more over the left shoe, in position there, hovering the club just above the level of the sand and I'm looking to hit the sand behind the ball. This is the only shot in golf that we don't actually strike the ball, so we need to make sure we hit the sand behind. So we're in position there, a little bit more knee flex than usual. We're in position, ready to play the shot. And out she comes, nice and soft, landing quickly and not running away from us. That's how we play a bunker shot. Well, as you can see, I'm in a position on the golf course where I now have to chip over a bunker. Now that terrifies some people, but it needn't be that bad. Um, the bunker's a little bit in front of us, the green's just the other side. We need a shot, obviously, with uh, a bit of loft. It's going to be landing softly on the green. Um, so obviously selection of club is important. We all have a pitching wedge and a sand wedge. Some of us might have uh, bought a lob wedge, which has 60 degrees of loft, a lot more lofted than a, a sand wedge or a pitching wedge. Um, so we have the tools for the job. We just need to know how to go about playing it. Now, a lot of it is psychology. A lot of it is confidence. Um, so if we practice it enough, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. The problem people give themselves is when they're in a situation like this, they try to lift the ball themselves. So what they tend to do, they tend to see the ball, on the ground they see the bunker in front of them they think it's their job to lift the ball so the ball position goes forward the hands go behind the ball which adds a little bit of loft to the golf club and their weight goes onto their right side the problem with that is that as they swing their club tends to rise as it hits the ball and often what happens is we either strike the ground behind the ball and duff it into the bunker or because the club is swinging upwards it hits the center of the ball or the top of the ball and shoots it across the green so they're the most common faults that we see when people try and play these shots. What we have to do is try to fight, log fight logic, argue with logic. Trying to get the ball up is not our job. Okay? We have a club that's going to do it for us. We have to position ourselves in the correct way, which will help the club strike the ball properly, creating the loft for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a small stance. We're not going to make a big swing here. The club's not travelling fast, so we don't need to have a shoulder width stance. We're going to have a nice small stance. We're going to keep the shoulders parallel, but we're just going to rotate the feet round slightly so they both point slightly to the left of the ball. What that does, that puts the right hip in a position where we can't swing back too far. What it also allows us to do as we swing through, it just allows us just to gently turn the hips through. That will prevent us from using the hands excessively. A lot of times if people stood there square, they come to play the shot, the hands pass, and they allow the club head to go past and the face shuts. What that means is the ball then goes left and it's a little bit too low. 
So if you want to hit a nice high shot, a very soft landing shot, we're just going to turn the feet around so they both point to the left. We're going to have the club face in position and what we're going to try to do is to get the sternum in front of the ball. If we can get the sternum in front of the ball, the weight's a little bit on the left side. What that will mean is that we can swing the club slightly down into the back of the ball. Swinging down into the back of the golf ball allows it to go up in the air. It seems a little bit bizarre, seems a bit uh, topsy-turvy, but that's how we get the ball up in this game, by hitting down. So putting the weight more on the left side, having the feet in position, which prevents the right hip from turning back too far, allowing the hips just to gently turn through, allows us to create a situation where there's loft on the golf club. Standing too square, swinging into the ball means that the club face closes. So, standing slightly open with the feet, but parallel with the shoulders, hands forward, sternum forward. We're just gonna gently hit down and the ball pops up over the bunker and lands softly, okay? We have to fight the urge to lift this. If at any point the club head passes the hand, if this left wrist breaks down, that's when we hit up. That's when we hit the ball thin or top it and it will go in the bunker or over the other side of the green. So we're gonna set up again, get the sternum in front, get the hands in front, the handle of the club you can see is opposite the left thigh and we're just going to gently hit down and the ball pops up. That's how we hit the ball off the fairway, chipping it up over a bunker. I'm now going to be talking about pitching. Now pitching covers any distance, anything from a chip just off the edge of the green right back to a full swing. So because of that people find it very awkward uh, gauging distances. Um, when we're pitching, we can pitch with any club, really, um, a 9-iron if we want a slightly lower ball flight, pitching wedge, even a sand wedge, perhaps even a lob wedge if we have one. Um, the, the problem we have, obviously, we have to uh, practice it quite regularly in order to find our distances. Uh, the tour pros obviously know to the, to the yard exactly how far they're going to hit all of their wedges with a, a, a half swing, a three-quarter swing and a full swing. They'll have those distances written down somewhere so their caddies know how to give them layup yardages if they're pitching into a par four or into a par five. So we need to do the same thing. But again, the problem with pitching, the technique that we use, um, we have to strike down. Hitting down into the back of the ball helps it up in the air. Again, and this is what people can't, uh, can't imagine. They still think it's their job to try to get the ball up in the air. They place their weight uh, on, a, on a different place. They put the weight too much on the right side rather than the left side. They try to lift the ball off the fairway. This is not our job. We have a club with plenty of loft. Uh, we have to hit down to create the backspin, to lift the ball high, land it softly on the green. So many amateurs struggle to create any backspin at all uh, because they don't hit down into the ball. They hit up. So when we're pitching, the important thing to remember is, again, placing the weight is, is vital. So when I set up to play a pitch shot, I'm going to make sure that my shoulders are parallel to the target, but I'm going to rotate my lower half slightly to the left. So my feet, my knees, perhaps even my hips are aiming slightly to the left of the target. What that does, that puts me in a position where, again, I can't rotate too far back in the backswing. If we swing the club too far back, we have two options. If we continue at the same rate, we're going to overhit the shot. We then either have to decelerate, which means then we end up hitting the ball short, the strike uh, becomes inconsistent, we end up hitting the ground before the ball. So we must make sure that we're in control of how far back the club goes and then we follow through pointing the hips to the target at the end of the swing. Again, uh, rather like chipping over a bunker, if we're standing too square to the shots, a lot of times because the hips can't turn out of the way, the club comes in towards the ball and the hands allow the club to pass, the face closes and we end up hitting it left of the target so then we start aiming a bit more to the right, we create too low a ball flight, the ball lands with top spin and it doesn't stop. So we need to make sure that we're standing slightly open with the feet, the feet aren't that wide, okay? they're, they're less than shoulder width, but again the important issue here is that we place weight on the left side, so we're leaning towards the target. We may want to grip down the club a little bit just to, uh, just to control the distance of the shot. By gripping down, we reduce the, 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 the length of the shaft and we prevent it from going its full distance. From there, we must make sure as we swing back, 
we keep it smooth there's going to be a little bit of wrist hinge not too much wrist hinge but we don't want to try and keep the, the hands and wrists straight as we swing the club back so we're going to put weight on the left side we're going to swing back a little bit of wrist hinge we'll hit down into the back of the ball and we'll turn through turning through with the hips facing the target creates a situation where we keep loft on the club face so from there we hit swing back hit down and hold that finish you can see my right heels off the floor my hips are beginning to face the target I've created a situation where there's loft on the club face if you look at the shot that's uh, that some people play when their feet are too square they swing back and they let the hands pass the club the face closes and the ball goes to the left and if you look from a side angle you'll notice because I'm gripping down I'm standing a lot closer you can see that my shoulders are parallel but my feet and knees are aiming to the left because I'm standing a lot closer when this club swings back it swings back into a slightly steep position the thing we've got to remember if we hold the top of the club and stand too far away from the ball we're going to swing very flat if we swing very flat the plane of the swing it comes in too shallow it comes in too shallow again we can hit the ground behind the ball or the club can swing round and we start hitting the ball to the left so standing a little bit closer making sure the shaft of the golf club is a little bit more vertical and there we can swing back keeping the hands out in front of the body down and through always remember to try and take a little divot hitting down into the back of the ball means we'll hit the ball first the divot second never the other way around we never want to take the divot before the ball okay so standing nice and close feet aiming to the left Swinging back into a slightly steep position, keeping the hands in front of the body, swing down and turn through. Keeps loft on the club face. If you do that, I'm sure you'll have a lot more success.